the blazing white line is in the house and ready for another reaction video. Now the video I'm about to react to has been brought to us by none other than a blue spooky. Great channel, you ought to check him out. He does excellent scary story vids, like what we're about to see. So be sure to subscribe to him. But besides that, let's have fun. Let's get this party started. Now without further ado, let's uh a go. I attended a pretty awful university in the UK. In fact, it was so awful that Vice even published an article written by a student that attended the same time as me. It was titled, Three Years of Hell at the University of Wolverhampton. I'll post a link at the end of my story for anyone wishing to see proof of just how terrible this place is. I lived in a student building in the middle of the city one of the three student buildings available. It was the middle choice. Literally, it was situated right in the middle of the three, and also, figuratively, it was the middle as well. Not as fancy as the fancy one. Not as unbearable as the worst one. Most of my friends lived in the fancy building. To get there, I had to walk a small trek through a residential part of the city, but my friends had found a shortcut. You could actually cut through and climb up at the back of a garden behind an abandoned house to get there in less than half the time. I started using this shortcut all the time. One morning, I walked around towards the garden and down to my shortcut when I found three grown men standing there. They all looked, for lack of a better word, thuggish and large. I uttered a small surprised, oh, when I saw them, and they all turned to look up at me. A pale 19-year-old gay country boy with a blonde mohawk. I think I apologized for barging in on what I was pretty sure was a drug deal. I turned to walk back the way I came, and take the long way around. As I walked away, one of them shouted to get my attention. I ignored them as best I could. When I heard them coming after me, I started to run. I was much younger, slimmer, and fitter back in those days, so I managed to outrun them pretty easily, and sprinted all the way around the long route to my friend's building, where they led me in. I explained to them what had happened, and nobody was surprised at all. This was Wolverhampton, after all. A few minutes later, a friend of ours finally arrived. He lived in a non-university student building off campus and had to walk a different way to get to where we were. He arrived and asked me, Kyle, what did you do? I asked him why he had said that, and he said that an enormous man had come up to him and asked if he'd seen a guy with a blonde mohawk. My friend acted dumb, even though he immediately knew who he'd been talking about. My poor choice of hair was fairly distinct. The worst part, the man was carrying a brick in his hand. Still gives me shivers all these years later. But it doesn't end there. Me and my friends went for a day out to Birmingham. Bright lights, big city, whatever. We didn't get home until late at night. We got back to their building and drank until way after midnight. I started to relax a bit and forget my horrible ordeal from earlier that morning. At some point, more than a little bit drunk, I decided to head home. I was now pretty sure I would never take the shortcut again, so I took the long way home instead. As I was walking through the residential area, a car stopped on the opposite side of the road. There were two men inside the car, and the car was filled with smoke and stank of weed when they rolled down the window to speak to me. I didn't have headphones in or anything, and I was the only person on the street, so I couldn't just ignore them or pretend I couldn't hear them. Nice hair, the driver said. His friend sniggered. Oi, mate, do you know where we could get some food? I don't know, in the city center, I said. 
I kept walking, trying not to show them how unnerved I was. They were facing the wrong way to drive alongside me, so the driver put the car in reverse so they could keep pace with me. Do you know any places? A few. There's a kebab place at the top of the road. Get in and show us, yeah? I'm drunk and tired, and I've got lectures that in That is when you run immediately. Obviously, they're going to take you somewhere with a sack and a shovel and bury you. Morning. I tried to sound casual, even though I was just about ready to pee my pants. It hadn't been a very good day. We're going to turn around and come back to pick you up. Wait there, yeah? As the car started towards the end of the road, which was a dead end, to turn around, I heard the passenger say, It's him. I knew it was him. When the car was far enough away, I broke into a sprint and ran back towards my building. I stumbled down some stairs and twisted my ankle pretty badly, but managed to limp the rest of the way. I got through the front door just as the car drove past. I dread to think what could have happened that day. For the rest of my time at that god-awful university, I prayed to never meet any of those guys again. Fortunately, I never did. Hey everyone. So I'm a guy from the UK. I live in a town in Wales, albeit not the little villages most people imagine. My town is a popular holiday destination, right along the coast of Wales. This isn't overly relevant to the story, but I just thought I'd give everyone some context for the location. I actually did post this story on a separate Reddit account several years ago in a different subreddit. However, I had highly exaggerated it for the sake of story. This was a creative writing subreddit, after all. I can't fully remember. I just remember the story I told then wasn't totally honest. So if you think you've read something similar before, well, you probably have. This is the full truth of what happened, and is likely way less exciting than the original story, but, uh, ah well. So, it started when I was around 15 years old. So, about eight years ago. I was dating a girl from about two towns over. I would usually get the train to hers and back. However, this one night, her family weren't supposed to be home, and we were kind of being watched by her brother, who was about 19 to 20 and was very chill. The plan was to stay the night. We were up late playing on the Wii, but her parents unexpectedly came home. I never got along with her mother, and the whole thing got kind of heated. I was kicked out of the house and told I couldn't stay over. It was about 2 a.m., and I didn't want to call my own parents and worry of waking them up. My mother is a very strict woman, so I began the long trudge home. It was roughly about an hour and a quarter worth of walking, so I was expecting to be home by about half past four. So I walked along the weird concrete bit just above the beach. I'm not sure what it's called. I stopped after about a half an hour of walking, as there was a public toilet which was kind of run down. It was also open 24 hours though, and I was getting pretty desperate. I was expecting it to be empty, or to just have a homeless dude sleeping in it, but I was wrong. There was a man using the urinal. This man looked to be in his mid to late fifties, maybe. A little on the overweight side, but not extremely. He had gray, messy-ish hair, but other than that, he looked to be a very normal guy. He definitely didn't look homeless. I remember he made a quick joke about something, but I don't remember what. I politely laughed, did my business, and left. After about another 15 minutes of walking, the weather had gotten extremely bad. It started to rain heavily, and the wind was picking up. I seem to remember this was around November time, so it was very cold as well. Anyways, I was walking and a car drives by, beeps and pulls over just in front of me. I assumed that it was someone I knew, but couldn't think of who it could be. When I got to the car, 
I saw that the dude from the toilet was inside. He asked me where I was headed to, and I told him. He said that was a long walk, and I couldn't be expected to walk all that way in this weather. He offered me a lift. In hindsight, I probably should have refused, but the weather was very bad, and at the time he wasn't giving off any creepy vibes. The drive took about 15 minutes, I think. Maybe 20. The more I was in the car with him... Isn't this how most unsolved murders happen? The more I started to get vibes that there was something strange about this guy. He was telling me about his best friend, who was a 14-year-old lad who stayed over at his place a lot. That they'd drink together, and if I ever wanted to join, I was welcome to come. He was asking me some really invasive questions as well. I don't fully remember what they were. I just kind of remember it's not the sort of questions you'd ask someone you're giving a simple lift home to. Anyways, we got to the street around the corner from my place. I asked him to just drop me off there. I told him that my house wasn't accessible by road, and that I would walk the rest of the way. He gave me his number and told me to ring him when I got back to my house safely, as he wanted to make sure I got home okay. I asked him what his name was, as at this point I had told him my full name, and he just said Pete. Pete what? My phone wants a surname. He wouldn't tell me. He just kept saying, Call me Pete. I later found out that Pete was a fake name too. I got into my house and texted him, just to let him know that I was home safe. Probably a bad decision, but back then I was just full of them to you be- You think? I wouldn't have texted him back at all. Sketchy as fuck. Be honest. The next day came, and I was expecting everything to just go right back to normal. It didn't, because I stupidly gave Pete my number when I texted him. I started to get texts from him every morning, basically just saying good morning to me and wishing me well. I replied to the first few, and then I started to ignore them. He then started trying to ring me, every single night. I would ignore most of his calls, but he would often repeatedly ring over and over until I finally answered. He was always sending me these texts, inviting me over to his house for drinks. He kept telling me he'd just gotten himself a pool table and wanted me to come and play it with him. He was telling me a story of a friend he was playing Either There's either two things going on here. Either this guy is a sexual predator, or either he's just a plain old serial killer. Either way, ignore the calls. Playing pool with the 14-year-old I was talking about, and accidentally let slip that the guy called him John. I collared him about this and said, I thought your name was Pete. Oh no, my friend's name is John. You just said your friend called you John, and you told me your friend was called Tom. Oh, well, some people call me John. It's just a nickname, but his name is John too. He hesitated saying this, and it kind of clicked that he was just feeding me a bunch of lies. I kept refusing, but he kept asking. After a while, my mom wanted to know who this dude who kept texting me and ringing me was. I told her, and she rang him herself from her phone, and told him that if he carried on texting and ringing me, she would be calling the police. I didn't get any more texts from him after that, but it didn't just end there. I had a routine, you see and he knew it. I always walked my dog at half four every afternoon, and played with her for about 40 minutes on the field at the end of- In my opinion, all of this was premeditated, because if he knows your exact route and everything you do during the day, obviously he's been spying on you. Obviously he's been keeping track of you for some time now. So obviously this guy is some sort of serial killer or weird predator. Either way, stay away. But I'm just saying, that is plain creepy my street, just near where he had dropped me off. I started to notice after a while that his car was pulling up there within five minutes of me getting there with my dog. He had tinted windows, but I would always notice the car lights were always left on and the engine was always running. By then, I could recognize his car. I would occasionally notice the car door open 
and a large flash from that direction, as if someone was taking pictures. I started changing the time I walked my dog, but he would always figure it out and start showing up either later or earlier to coincide with when I was walking her. This went on for months, and I never mentioned it to anyone, but one day it just suddenly stopped. He stopped pulling up at the side of the field. I never saw his car after that. No text messages or phone calls from him. It all just stopped. Yeah, he's probably in some dark room somewhere wanking to your pictures. Or something else, I don't know. Just saying, taking an educated guess. I ended up getting a new phone after about a year, and had that for another two years. I dug my old phone out when I was around 18 or 19, after my aforementioned dog had just died. I had some old pictures and videos of her on that phone, and wanted to transfer them over to my PC so that I always had them. I turned on a phone which had been turned off for several years now, and still had the old SIM in it. And that's when I got my final message from Pete. It was an odd one, just about 14 months old. It said something along the lines of, Hi, I know we haven't spoken in a while, but I just thought you should know that over New Year, I was diagnosed with an illness, and I've been told I don't have long left to live. You were a good friend in the short time we knew each other. I live at... sent me his address, and would really appreciate it if you could come around, just so I could have one last... Nope, nope, this is a trap. This is a trap. This guy's obviously going to kidnap you and wear your skin as a coat. Chat with you. I've got some beers in, and if it gets too late, you can just stay the night. Just drop me a phone call when you want me to come around, so that I can get everything ready for you. See you soon. I have no idea if Pete slash John was genuinely ill, or was just trying to lure me to his house. I've never been to the address he sent me and never responded to him or heard from him since. I didn't reply to him, and after that text was the last I'd ever heard from the guy. So, yeah, that's the story. It's not tremendously exciting, but it kind of had a big impact on me during those years. So I hope you all enjoyed. This summer, I traveled alone to Colombia. I stayed with a host family in Cartagena and met a girl from Brazil named Maria, who was also staying there. Maria and I quickly became friends and started doing as many touristy activities as we could during the day and partying together all night. One afternoon, we were researching day trips for the weekend when we came across the island of San Andres. We immediately fell in love with its beauty and booked a trip there for Saturday. When we got there, everything was great. We swam in the ocean, ate great food, and had an amazing time with the other people in our hostel. While we were exploring the town, we got sucked in by a tour agency and spent all of our money booking tours like parasailing, boating out to the smaller islands, and the like. One of the activities we decided to try was scuba diving, despite neither of us having a license. The tour agency said it would be fine, because we wouldn't go very deep, and a licensed professional would be with us the whole time. So, we woke up early the next morning, and got picked up in a van with a driver, a scuba instructor, and a family from Spain. The driver took us to a secluded spot on the island, now, this was a small island, like super hard to avoid people, but this spot didn't even have any locals. The whole time we were there, maybe three cars at most drove past. Anyway, the instructor, Jose, gave us directions and safety tips in three different languages, and then took the family to dive while Maria and I waited for our turn. After they'd left... Maria turned to me and started telling me that she didn't trust Jose. She told me that while they were speaking in Portuguese, he'd made some strange comments about our swimsuits. We were both wearing bikinis, and were both young, and I suppose fairly attractive women. 
and when she told him that neither of us had boyfriends, he was very insistent that Maria and I must be a couple then. I shrugged it off as a cultural thing, and told her that it would be fine. Our turn to dive finally rolled around, and we hopped into the water with- I wouldn't dive. This guy is awfully sketchy as fuck, he has some other innuendo planned. I mean, secluded area, talking about your swimsuits, that should raise a couple red flags right there. I realized immediately that this was more of an intermediate than a beginner dive, but it didn't really bother me. I was excited to see the coral and fish. I could tell it made Maria very nervous though. She wasn't exactly a strong swimmer anyway, and Jose was putting her on edge. At first, it was fun. We were swimming and Jose was taking pictures for us on his GoPro, but then he started grabbing us strangely touching our breasts and making it seem like an accident. Again, I did- Yeah, this guy's obviously some sort of sexual predator. Didn't really think anything of it, because we were underwater and it was his job to make sure we stayed close to him. But it was enough to freak Maria out and immediately end her dive. Maria got out of the water, but I was having a fantastic time and didn't really want to leave just yet. I stayed with Jose just the two of us. He took me to a different spot on the reef, and we ended up swimming past all the coral into the open ocean. I was really curious what I would see there. At this point, we were probably about 80 feet or 24 meters deep, which is just ridiculous for someone without a diving license. We'd gotten pretty good at non-verbal communication at this point, and it was like I could read his mind. He took some pictures of me with the GoPro in open water, and I was excited to show my friends what a daredevil I was. After a while, I started to get tired and decided to head back, and that's when he grabbed me. He started gesturing to me, and from what I understood, he was not going to let me leave until I kissed him. Now, Jose was probably about 40. That is when you kick him and swim as fast as possible. And I'm not talking about a friendly kick, I'm talking about make his nosebleed kick. And I was 18 at the time. Plus, I had a boyfriend who Maria didn't know about. Honestly, I don't really think I need to justify why kissing a complete stranger underwater would gross me out. That's just fucking weird. But I was starting to get this gut feeling that I should go with what he told me. I laughed and gave him a kiss on the cheek, which he not so sneakily photographed. He looked me in the eyes and shook his head no. I could tell he was starting to get agitated. He took my air tube away until I kissed him on the mouth. He repeatedly did this until he got everything he wanted, photographing and all. My gut was screaming that the only way this would end was by me being drowned, so I improvised. I pretended to be into it for a while, and then I looked behind him and got the widest eyes. The goal was to make him think that I saw something dangerous. It worked. He turned around, and I swam away as fast as I could. Eventually, I got to the surface and popped my head up. To my absolute horror, we were super far away from the shore. Jose surfaced next to me, and in kind of an irritated voice asked me what I saw. He insisted it was safe to go back down if I wanted to finish the dive. By some miracle, Maria saw us and started waving. I waved back to her and started swimming that way. I guess Jose knew his plan was fucked once Maria saw me alive. He sighed and headed back with me. On the drive back, I was super quiet, and Maria immediately knew something was wrong. I typed out everything that had happened and showed it to her. She was furious. We ended up buying the pictures Jose took on the GoPro to try and use them as evidence, but he only sent us the ones from earlier on in the dive. Honestly, it makes me sick thinking he probably still jacks off with them. We tried to contact the police, but of course they didn't care. Jose is still out there, and I hope whoever dives with him is smart. Didn't care? What kind of assholes are these cops? For goodness frickin' sake! If someone tells you there's a predator, you should believe them regardless. I mean, that's just messed up. I mean, they didn't believe them? For 
goodness freaking sake. That's just messed up. If someone says they've been victimized, you have to believe them. I mean, it's just... ...harder than I was. Which I can admit, sometimes some police officers or cops can be very dense. Just saying. Not trying to judge the profession, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, if someone tells me they're being victimized by a dude, I'm going to believe them, regardless of anything. Even if they don't have the evidence. Because there's nothing, pro there's nothing proving to me that they're lying. So I have to believe they're telling the truth. I would at least give it the benefit of a doubt and look into it. That's just my opinion. But besides that, fact. What is up, guys? Blue Spooky here, as always. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. As always, be sure to let me know what you guys think, and please feel free to like, comment, or subscribe if you feel so inclined. I know some people have also had some problems about videos not appearing in their sub box, so uh, please make sure to hit that little bell if you guys want to always be notified of when my next video comes out. As always, links to all of my social media will be in the description of the video below. You can find links to my Twitter, Gmail, Twitch, and Facebook accounts. So if you guys ever want to talk to me, just go ahead and shoot me a message on any of those, and I'll try to respond to your message as soon as possible. I'm also going to start trying to stream on Twitch a little bit more, so if you guys have notifications on there, You'll be notified right away when I go live. I might also try to do some on YouTube, but I haven't decided yet. I'm still kind of trying to decide what kind of streams I want to do. Uh, anyways, if you guys have a story you would like to send in, or if you have a story you would like to suggest that I read, go ahead and send me a message on any of those links in the description below. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include the title, how you would like to be credited, and any genres that this story might have, if it does have one. Uh, if you guys are curious about the music used in this video, go ahead and take a look in the description below as well. I always put all of the music in the order in which it appears in the video, and I also have links to the artists as well. Last but not least, I also have a Patreon if you guys feel like you want to contribute to the channel a little bit. But of course, as always, it is never required and you will never have to pay for watching any of my videos. So that's just something you do if you feel like it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and please be sure to leave your feedback in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you very much. Well, I have to say, those stories were interesting, and I have to say they gave me the creeps. They weren't exactly paranormal or anything, but besides that, this, they, they just gave me the creeps. I mean, that was just plain dark. Some of the, the two, of the first two weren't eventful, but still dark. And the third one just plain was messed up. But besides that, that was an interesting video, completely well done. This guy does excellent work with these scary stories, excellent work with the everything. Um, be sure to subscribe to him. Be sure to subscribe to Blue Spooky. He's a great channel. He does awesome work. And I hope you all have a nice Twinnies Day, and I hope you all take care. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, The Blazing White Lion. Be sure to check out my BitChute channel, where I do certain exclusives. And also, be sure to any comments and any videos you'd like to recommend in the description down below. Thank you. Have a nice Twinnies Day, and I hope you all take care. But I have to say, that was just plain <laughs> creepy. Besides that, one, two, three.